Randy is such a blessing, and uh, I, I love to hear uh, I love to hear his his take on uh, and the style that's going to be developing. You know, when you first get started out with preaching, everything's new and it's uh, so overwhelming, and it's only after a while that you really begin to kind of feel your way into it. And uh, uh, I remember my first full-length sermon was, uh, I only had 18 pages of notes, and so it was only like two hours long. And Archie Bland, <laughs> Randy's style is a little bit different than mine was. And I've managed to cut mine down to at least an hour and a half, so <laughs> you know, it's not as bad as it was in those days. Uh, did that make 20? Did that? I wasn't timing it. I, didn't, I should have started the timer. Been practicing it was. Been practicing for 20. Okay, that's good. Good man. So, you know, when Jesus was teaching and preaching in his day, you know, most everyone was working the land. Maybe they worked the land with raising animals. Maybe they worked the land raising crops. It was an agrarian society. Everyone worked the land, and it was, you know, like the most rural areas of our country where we're raising vegetables and having uh, farm animals. There's... A lot of that disappearing from East Tennessee because all the farms are being turned into uh, big neighborhoods and stuff like, well, this land out here used to be a big piece of pasture land. No doubt at some point some people was raising their crops on this land at some point in the past. And, and those times are changing. When Jesus taught, he used stories that involved raising animals or raising crops. And I was... As Randy was going through us, uh, you know, the early part of his sermon there, I was thinking about uh, Jesus telling the story about the prodigal son. And so his father was wealthy. No doubt he had, uh, he had lands and raised crops, but he also had, uh, he also raised uh, sheep and goats. And later on in the story, you know, the, the older brother said, well, you never gave me a kid so I could make merry with my friends. You know, he was he was referring to the animals that his father had. When the prodigal son took his portion of the wealth and he went out, it said that he had riotous living, and then what did he end up doing? He ended up working at a pig farm. So these elements of 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 the agrarian society, of the of the rural crop raising and the animal raising, all that, everybody knew about that kind of stuff, so he used those stories. <laughs> he talked about and he wanted to make a Bible point or a scriptural point, something about the spirit world, he would compare it to things that were what everybody was familiar with. Now a lot of us old timers he had had gardens, had, you know, we, we were some of us raised on farms. I was more in a, a townie, but I mean I had a lot of family that had uh, had uh, uh, little small farms and stuff like that. And so so that's in my generation, in my lifetime, things have changed. Most, most people today don't have that experience. They live in cities and they play video games and they watch movies like Star Wars. So, Randy, start with your, with your, with your, uh, your Bible uh, sermon series about the movies. What's it called? Uh, sneak, pre uh, <coughs> sneak Preview was the first one. This is what's the name of the whole sermon series? Moving pictures. Moving pictures. Thank you. Uh, you know he's referring to movies like Star Wars, like Jesus referred to the stories of the parables. I mean, it's the same thing. You you tell a story that people can relate to, and then you work it in to make your Bible point. That's exactly what Randy does. If you you're not accustomed to seeing Star Wars in there in a sermon, then. Maybe you of the previous generation and God's raising up Randy for reaching the new generation. You remember that Bible verse where it says you don't put new wine into old bottles? Because otherwise the old bottles will burst and then the wine's wasted. You put new wine in new bottles. God is raising up Randy to minister to some new bottles and fill them up with the Spirit in ways that I would not be able to reach. And so... Um, so I'm, I'm grateful to see what God is doing for a new generation. The same Bible stories, the same word is being preached, but in a, in a way that maybe you might not be accustomed to. But watch what God does. And so, uh, 
So the time has come that Randy has reached a point to where he's ready for the church to back him for his new calling. And there, it was a similar time that I went through. I, I was a young minister one time, preached for three hours, and, and I've had to learn how to do things over the years. Randy's getting started, and I, I'm just anxious to see how God is going to shape and mold him. So, uh, if somebody would, let's go knock on the door back here and get uh, get uh, uh, Sheila and Megan back out here, because I think it's important that Megan be a part of us out here. You can let them know. God is doing a work on our land, and always be supportive of God's work in everything that you see God doing, you know, we're supposed to weigh the spirits to see whether they be of God. Everybody on the, everybody with that? You know, if you hear, if you hear a, a, a turn on the TV or something and you hear a new preacher and he says, I'm preaching something new, if it's the same gospel that we know and we love and was taught to us and he's just teaching it in a new way, then we can say, this is biblical. But if he's off preaching something that is new in the sense that he's got some own oh, some of his own ideas that aren't in the Bible, I encourage you not to listen to that person because it's not Bible. If it's not Bible, we shouldn't have anything to do with it because God's Word never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what we saw today, this is the Word of God, and it's just in... Uh, a, a new kind of packaging and it's going to be reaching the next generation. So, Randy, they'll come someday that you're the old guy behind the pulpit and you'll have the congregation and it'll be full of people younger than yourself who is hearing the Word of God for the first time. You are presenting to them and thank you for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit to reach them the effective way that way God would reach to them. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but the way he reaches changes with each generation because there's a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. And that's because the old songs, we were in a, where were we yesterday that we were, was it a restaurant? Oh, we was up at the Shoney's. Oh, yeah. We was up at the Shoney's up here on, uh, uh, between, well, it's between Asheville Highway and the interstate there where the zoo exit is, Rutledge Pike. And they were playing 50s oldies songs. And you know, those were great songs. But you know, I felt really sorry for the waitresses that listened to that every single day. I think they played the same CD every day. And there's only so much doo-wop that I can take before I gotta turn that thing off. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I want to hear something new. And the next generation, they don't want to hear 50s stuff. I know you like it, but the next generation wants to hear a new song. And that's what the Lord says. Sing unto him a new song. So, the time has come. Let me grab uh, let me grab this right here. Randy, would you come up and Rachel and Megan stand over here to Randy's side? Stand over with you, Mom, if you don't mind. <laughs> That'll make it work better. <laughs> Randy, you are called to be a minister. And a minister is God's representative on earth that speaks his words and teaches and readies those that don't know him yet. And you're bringing them into the kingdom. You're sharing the gospel. And for everyone, there's a first time of hearing the gospel. Every individual that is alive on earth needs Jesus. We, we, we can be respectful to where they're at, and respectful of what 
Maybe they're of a different religion. Maybe they're, maybe they're from a different background than us. The culture is different. But the heart is the same. We all have this empty space. And so as a minister, I want to ask you to pledge yourself to serve every human being and to bring the Word of God to fill that heart to them. Randy, do you pledge to serve the spiritual needs of every human being that you encounter? I want to charge you today, Randy, to always be true to God's Word. I want to charge you today to always be obedient. Let your heart be molded by what you read in the Scripture. Don't fixate on something that is, you know, hey, that's what I was taught, because let every man be a liar, but let God be true. If you find it in Scripture, and it's different than what you were taught, always let yourself be molded to, to whatever the Bible says. Study it and be show yourself approved. But then take that word and apply it to your heart. Apply it to your family. Make sure that everything you speak from the pulpit, you do at home. When you ask other people to do something, make sure you're willing to do it to your own self. And as a minister of God, you will not just be preaching the word, but you will be living the word too. That is part of the of the commitment that we make. Doug, do you have anything that you'd like to charge Randy with in the in the work of the gospel? Being faithful to the Lord, that's the most important thing. If you got that, you got the world, brother. Just be faithful to him. He'll be faithful to you. Every human being goes through highs and lows. And there's going to be times that you're going to go through low time. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be challenges. You two are supporting each other through the whole life. As long as you're living at home and part of the family and living in their household, Megan, you also need to do what you can to help and support Randy because this is an important work that he is doing for the Lord. And this is something that he'll be doing for the rest of his days because the Bible clearly says that a calling for the Lord is without repentance. That means that you know we don't get to change our mind and say I'm not called anymore. The Holy Spirit will get you up to do that. You know that. But we'll go through highs and lows and when you go through those lows lift each other up and help one another. Use the scriptures and apply them to your home and you will strengthen your home and to help you withstand those difficult times of, that will come. But always be faithful. Always be true to the Lord. Don't turn your eyes to the left or to the right, but always keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And it might seem like sometimes, oh, I need to do this, but just always make sure that that's the same thing Jesus would do in the same situations that he faced. And be honest with yourself and always be true to that. I have a certificate of ordination for Randy today, and let me read it. Let me read what it says. It says, Spirit and Truth Fellowship of Knoxville. That's our, that's our church here, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37924 USA, certifies that Randy Henderson is ordained as a minister in the ministry of the gospel of Christ and pledges to work for the spiritual welfare of all people and is hereby authorized to preach the gospel, to perform holy matrimony, and to baptize and to practice all other activities pertaining to this office according with the respective ordinances of residence. Go and preach the gospel. This is granted today on May the 29th of 2022 and is valid for a year until May 31st of 2023. It's the same process that I went through as a minister. Basically, it's kind of like probation for a, for the year, for this year. The church back is going to back Randy and basically support his efforts to preach the gospel. So I will be letting Randy bring some of the messages here at the church. Um, and when we when we go out in the community, Randy will help with with whatever outreach efforts that we do. He's already been doing that really, and uh, uh, quite a lot. And, and basically from this day forward in the church, if I'm not here to do a communion, Randy can lead the communion, and I'll be teaching and instructing him on those things. Um, 
Uh, being able to perform marriage ceremonies is something else that Randy will be able to do because the church is, is ordaining him for these purposes, for the things that we do, the things that ministers do. And so basically if somebody comes to Randy, somebody comes to you, Randy, and says, you know, you know, by what authority are you doing that? And you say, well, I've been ordained by Spirit and Truth Fellowship of Knoxville. And they call me up and, and, and I'll say, yes, that's one of our ministers. So we need to begin to look at Randy as one of our as one of our elders. He's been a deacon already for two years, and uh, and um, he has done a faith. He's been very faithful to that office and that job, and he, as he will be going forward, I know with with his duties as a minister. Um, and so let's be supportive of him in prayer, and uh, and uh, uh, basically as as Randy learns the scriptures and begins to preach that. Uh, always prove all things. I don't expect you to listen to everything you preach and just take it on faith. Check me. Check Randy. But encourage him and when he's preaching from the authority of the pulpit, uh, um, take what he says to heart and uh, try, to, try to integrate that into our life as a minister. So I got a certificate suitable for framing and then a small one for you to carry in your wallet or whatever, and I'm going to hand those to you. And let's welcome Randy. All right. Praise the Lord. Give me a hug. Everybody come around and give them, give them a hug and handshake and welcome in.